Hey, Cameron McKenzie here, Editor-in-Chief over at theserverside.com, and I want to talk to you about GitLab and specifically how you can push a new branch to an existing GitLab repo. As you can see, I've got my GitLab repository right here, but there's only one lonely branch. That's the main branch. What I want to do is first I'm going to start off by cloning this repository. So I'll clone the GitLab URL, come over here, open up a Git bash shell, git clone, paste that URL in, and then magically I've got all of my remote GitLab files on my local machine here. I will cd into that repo and you can see I've got Adam Baker and Carol as HTML files there. But if I look at all my branches, I've only got one main branch. You should never do development on the main or master branch. What I want to do is create a new branch. So I'll do git switch dash c new branch. And you might be thinking, switch? What is switch? That's new with 2020 git release. So uh, we don't use the git checkout uh, anymore. If you do git switch dash c, it'll create a new branch and switch you onto that new branch. And if you don't believe that's a new branch, you can always do git branch dash A. And there we go. It says you've got a new branch. Now the problem is I've got a new branch locally, but I don't have a new branch up on GitHub. You can see that there's still only one branch up here. Um, I could push to that branch, but I always like to just create a new file and at least do a commit before doing a push. Okay, so now not only do I have a new branch, but I've got a new file, devo.html, uh, committed to it. And now let's see what happens if I try and do a git push. So git push origin, origin being the server that I cloned from, and it says, no, you can't do that. That is not going to work. you got to set the upstream. You've got to tell your local git environment which remote server to push to. Now you might be thinking, well that seems a bit needless. I mean, I've really only got one remote server, but remember Git is distributed. And so potentially you could have multiple remote servers. And so this might just be a bit of a reminder for the true distributed nature of Git. And yeah, it's a bit esoteric and it's a bit unnecessary if you only have one server, but you gotta do it. So let's set the origin, the place that I cloned from, as the upstream target of this new branch. So I do that, that's all done locally. Then it asks for, hey, why don't you go over to uh, uh, and sign in to your Git account. What is my Git account? Learn Java Fast, that's a good name. So learn Java Fast. What's the password? What is the password? I think I can remember it. Let's put that in and then all of a sudden it says, hey, everything went well and now you've got a new branch up on GitLab. Did I say GitHub earlier? Oh, please forgive me. Okay, do I have a new branch? No, I've only got one branch. I'm getting ripped off here. Uh, just do a little refresh there and you can see two branches. And what are those two branches? Well, it's the main branch and the new branch. And what do we have in this new branch? <laughs> Are we not men? We are Devo. There it is right there. And so we've actually got the new branch and we've got the new commit and we've got the new file. Now I should mention that, you know, uh, that upstream set is only required the first time you push your new branch to the remote GitLab repo. And so if I add a new commit here, So I've now got a new commit on this new branch. If I do a git push origin, well, you notice that I don't have to set the upstream, just git push origin will suffice. And if I come over here, do a little bit of a refresh, we can see that we've got Echo and the Bunnymen over here as well. And there you go. For all of you GitLab aficionados, that is how you push a new branch to a remote GitLab repo. If you enjoyed that tutorial, head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. We've got lots of great tutorials on Git and GitLab and various DevOps tools. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at Potemkin and subscribe on that thing called YouTube.